You know when you have the solution to a problem, but no one will listen to you? That's just how British General Henry Clinton must have felt. The problem he thought he could solve was how to win the American Revolutionary War. Henry Clinton knew the colonies well. He'd lived there as a child. And from the start, Clinton's view of the war was different from his colleagues. He thought the British priority should be to pursue George Washington and his army at all costs. Clinton wasn't shy about giving his opinions to his superior, British Commander-in-Chief General Howe. At the Battle of Long Island, Howe decided to take Clinton's advice. He split his troops and nearly encircled the entire Continental Force. Clinton urged his boss to destroy Washington's troops while they had the chance, but Howe refused. Clinton wanted to lead the planned British invasion force from Canada, but the job went to John Burgoyne instead. Clinton wasn't happy, but he knew it was still crucial to send a large force from New York to support Burgoyne. General Howe, though, had other ideas. He had his sights set on Philadelphia. Howe sent Clinton to lead a small diversionary attack hoping it might be enough to help Burgoyne. It wasn't. Burgoyne had to surrender his entire force, and Howe's reputation was shredded, which meant that finally, Clinton had a shot at the top job. Unfortunately, he became commander-in-chief at just the wrong moment. France entered the war in 1778 and tipped the scales against Britain. Clinton began to focus on the southern colonies and the capture of Charleston. He then left the southern campaign to his deputy, General Cornwallis. But resistance to the British kept growing. And when Cornwallis was forced back to Yorktown, Clinton failed to send reinforcements in time. That was the end of any chance of British victory in the colonies, and of Clinton's role as commander-in-chief. He spent the rest of his life back in England arguing that things would have turned out differently if only people had listened to him. 